Today I'm going to show you how to use the flight log taken during a survey mission and apply the GPS location data to a group of photos that you captured during the same survey mission. I have two folders here taken from the mapper cameras. The NDVI images are in this folder and the vis visible light images are in this folder. I have the T-log that I've taken from the 3D Robotics Solo, which has the Pixhawk flight controller in it. The T-log stores all the information about the UAV, such as position, all of the various Mavlink communication protocols, etc., etc. All we care about is the GPS information, and we're going to match that to the timestamps on the images. You're going to need Mission Planner installed to open the T-log file. Once you have Mission Planner installed, go ahead and open it. We're going to click the little arrow here and click on the telemetry logs. We're going to load the log just so we can get an idea of what it looks like. Okay, we're going to double click on the log file from our survey. As soon as you open the log file, it's actually going to start running the mission, which we don't need. So we're going to hit pause over here. This is the survey mission. The yellow lines here is the survey path. To open up the GeoRef image dialog box, we're going to hit Control F on our keyboard. We're going to click the first green box here called GeoRef Images. We've got two boxes here to fill. We're going to browse for the log. Here it is. Double click. And we're going to browse for the pictures. And I'm going to choose the entire NDVI photo set. We're using the time offset. We need to figure out the seconds offset, so we're going to estimate it. It's going to try to calculate the difference between the GPS location timestamp and the image timestamp. Whatever value it spits out down here, go ahead and copy. Now we're going to want to hit pre-process, and that's going to calculate all the images as compared to the GPS position and it's going to show you that some of them are very very close and some of them are a lot further away. Some of these are in the hundreds of milliseconds. And that's mainly due to the triggering of this camera model which triggers the shutter every three seconds. So you can imagine there's some discrepancy between when the camera fires and the GPS position data is recorded. Once you've pre-processed the images we're going to want to click the geotag image button here and that will then start geotagging the images. Okay, once it's done geotagging your images, we're going to close these dialog boxes. I typically like to convert the T-log file, which can only be opened in a few programs, into something that can be used in any track, uh, flight path, any sort of program that would be able to work with a GPS track information. And to do that, you're going to click on the T-log KML button here. And you can convert it to all sorts of different things. The, typically the one that I convert it to just is this first one here. And so clicking on it, then opening your T-log, it will then convert it. And it's going to convert it into something that both Google Earth can open and a pretty standard format that can be used in a lot of programs, which is the GPX. So if you go to our folder now, this is the T-log, which defaults in my computer to opening on Mission Planner and the KMZ file is something that's opened typically on Google Earth uh, and other programs too but the GPX one is pretty universal it works in almost any program but the GPX one is the one that we're after after I've converted the track file and geotagged using Mission Planner I like to use another program called GeoSetter and it's another free program so once you install GeoSetter you have the capabilities of loading in your track and the images and seeing how they all line up. This is just a visual check I like to do just to make sure that say the GPS information was accurate and when I click on a photo it actually represents pretty close or exactly to where in GPS location it should be in relation to what the photo looks like. By no means is this required but it will help you reduce your errors if you then spend time stitching them all together and after this step and realize that your whole image set had been shifted for some reason and it was due to some discrepancies in the GPS information. 
So here's GeoSetter. You want to make sure that you're under your view tab that image preview maps and tracks is all orange, meaning that they're selected and on. This is the image preview area, this is the maps area, and this is the tracks area. Go into the tracks section down here, there's an open tracks folder. We're going to click that. You can see that the T-log doesn't show up, which is why I typically convert it ahead of time. It says all known GPS files. This particular program doesn't like uh, T-logs, but it does love GPXs. So we're going to open the GPX file. Okay, so the red track that we see here is the same track file that we saw in Mission Planner. The GPS points down here, you click on them and you can see the GPS location marker updating on the top right. The photo viewer over here, these are the non-geotagged images. You can see there's no latitude, longitude underneath the timestamp and there's no blue marker on the top left. If you go to the geotagged ones from Mission Planner, you see that there's a lat long and there's a blue geotag marker. We can control A to select all the photos that were tagged in Mission Planner. Clicking the green arrow with all the blue dots, show image positions on map button, will load all the images into the map. This is helpful to verify that the GPS location actually matches up to the image. So what you want to do is you want to simply click on some images, uh, maybe you say in the middle or so. And what we want to do is we want to click through them using the arrows here, right, left. And this is going to show us, as we click through them, the image will show up down here. And the purple marker is the selected image. So for instance, we're selected on the image that you see. I'm going to go down here in the middle of the field. Oh, you can already see there's some issues. So if I'm going through the image sets and then looking at where the GPS location is on the map, the GPS location is on the left or, or on the image here, you're, you're seeing that it's going to be going in a straight line and then curving and then we're going to rotate. But if we look at the image, we are indeed going further along, but we're not, like this should be the turn here, as you see in the top right hand corner, but in our images it looks like we're just still going along the field. So we're definitely off. Again, going down GPS, here we are at the end of the field, rotated, and rotated again, and then going back up the field, that was definitely not what we were doing based on the GPS because the GPS location is just going through the straight through the field. So this is a good example of the discrepancies between just doing a simple time offset estimation through Mission Planner and how you shouldn't always trust what Mission Planner's information is giving you. Which is, suffice to say, that I don't use Mission Planner typically to do the geotagging I will use GeoSetter. So I'll use Mission Planner solely for converting the T-log into a GPX file. I'll then load the GPX file into it like we did already. And then we'll start by geotagging the images um, you know, from the beginning in GeoSetter. So let's do that now. OK, so here we are looking at the non-geotagged photos. We have the track and the waypoints loaded here. What we're going to do is we're going to find, similar to the turn that we found here, a very distinguishable point where we know what the image should look like versus what the turn should look like. Uh, this 45 degree turn here is going to be something that's very easy to see. So we're going to go through the GPS points down here at the bottom and we're going to find the GPS location of that turn. So I've clicked on the points, I'm using the up-down arrow until I find that turn, and there we are, right there at that turn. Then we're going to go through the photos, and we're going to find that turn. I already know that it's this one, and you can see that by clicking further down the field. So the track of the UAV went from here in this direction, hit the turn, and then went clear across the field. So here we are roughly about down here somewhere. 
clicking through the photos, you can see in the bottom left, we're going to the end of the field. There's this little waterway or collection of water and lack of vegetation here. And then we rotate, which is exactly where this point is here. And we're now oriented normal and we start going clear across the field. So we want to find the photo that matches a GPS point that we can easily distinguish as best as we can. It's either gonna be the one shortly before the turn, which is this one, the turn itself, or the one right after the turn. I'm gonna choose the turn itself to see how that matches up. So we have this point selected, this photo selected. We're going to control A again. We're gonna go up to images, synchronize with GPS data files, we're going to make sure synchronize with visible track is on because we want to synchronize with this track. We're going to set the difference between the taken dates and track points to the shutter trigger speed of our camera. This is the mapper cameras and they have a three second shutter. So we're going to set it to three. If your camera can shoot faster, then you'll want to set this to something around that time. Increasing this number will increase the likelihood that more photos are found for a particular GPS point. Our GPS points are much more numerous than our photos in this instance, so there's a good chance that there's going to be a GPS point perfectly for this particular photo, or I should say any photo. Down here on this drop-down menu, we're gonna to wanna to choose Use Track Point from Map. This is the track point that it's referring to. You'll see this is the photo that we had selected and you'll see that it's saying that the photo's timestamp is eight seconds different than the GPS timestamp. If we go to the one shortly before the turn, it's four seconds, one second is the one before that, and as we go further down the field, you'll see how it gets further away from the GPS time and the image time matching. So theoretically, if your camera was set perfectly to GPS time, which you can see this one actually is set very close to GPS time, we should be able to choose the one that's the closest to zero. So this is one second under and two seconds over in terms of difference. So we know that our marker is at the turn, not slightly down the field from it. So we want to choose a photo regardless of the offset over here closer to the turn. And I said I was gonna choose the turn itself. And you'll see it says it's eight seconds off. And we'll be able to check this and how it matches up and we can come back and tweak it if we need to. So once we decide on the photo that we want to choose, we're gonna click okay. And you can see that it found GPS data for all 334 images, which is good. Would you like to continue with this result? Yes, we would. Okay. You can see that all the photos have the GPS information in red text and they now have the blue GPS marker. Now the red text signifies that we've temporarily applied all the information to the images. This allows us to check it before we actually hit this button to save all the changes and permanently apply the GPS information. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna verify it similar to what we did with the mission planner tagged images and see if we need to tweak it. The advantage is that we have much more control in terms of adjusting which photo we choose to adjust that offset, which as you saw was eight seconds slower, and we can adjust it for one or the other before or after and make that adjustment accordingly. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on the photos here. So this particular one is there. Clicking on the photo, we're gonna use our right left arrows, so we're there. We're going further to, it's, it's kind of hard on this because this is upside down compared to this image, but just keep that in mind that we're going this direction. So we're coming this direction. So I click on the image here. We go to the next one. We can see that we're, or I'll go this far. Here we go. So we're there, we go to here, we go to here. You can see we're doing well. We're at the turn, that's great. We're at the turn again, also good and now we're going across the field. So that turn looked like it, it worked out well. Let's go to one that's completely, say, in the center, and that way we can check in multiple spots. And, you know, it's not important to check all of them, but you wanna make sure that they're matched up 
as close as possible. Applications like Pix4D will do its best to take its known GPS location within the image and put it as close to the other similar photos as possible and it can adjust the image's position based on the shared pixel that it finds. The more accurate you get the GPS location to the images, of course, the more accurate the stitch image will be and the less likely you'll have any errors or holes or missing issues and overlaps, etc, etc. So going to this turn, you can see we're coming across the field. This is looking good. We're getting to the edge of the field. We should start to turn. We're at the very corner. We're turning. We're going along. We're turning. And we're going down the field. Also very good. So this looks like we're spot on. I would say I'd be pretty happy with this right now. I'm going to check one more area just to be sure on the other side. Let's check, say, this section here. So starting in the field, we're going to go this way, looking at our images, we're doing well. See, we go across the field, we're going to the edge of the field, there's our little road there. We're at the edge. And turn, just like we should. We're turned, we're turned, and we're lined up. Yep. This is good. I'd say all these images are spot on. GPS locations are perfect. Now that we verify that the GPS tagging that we applied to the images is correct, we're going to want to save those changes to the images themselves. If you look at the folder that we have the photos in, these again were the mission planner tagged images, which of course we'll delete because they're going to be less accurate than the ones we're doing now. The images that we have here are actually the images in our GeoSetter application, of course, these are, even though they say GeoTag, they are not GeoTag. This is just some previously GeoTagged ones that I erased for this demo. So the GeoTagged images are going to be created here, and these files, when we save it in GeoSetter, the extension will be changed, and you'll see that here in a second. So most of the time, what I like to do is I like to copy all these images, Control C, make a new folder, call non geotag and I like to back these up. Uh, the program will indeed make a backup of them, but it'll change the extension, but it won't be something that the computer can see as an image. It'll be something .jpg underscore original or something like that. So after I've copied all the images, I'm just going to go into the non geotag ones, paste all those photos in there, as you can see here, and now I have a backup of the non-geotagged ones. And the ones that the software here, GeoSetter, is going to change are going to be these. And then we'll just delete all the ones that it changes because we've already backed them up here. And this I'm just going to change to MP underscore, as in Mission Planner geotagged, so that I know what they are. Okay, so back in GeoSetter, we're going to click the Save button. As you can see, it's going to save all the GPS information to the images. The image then gets the blue marker and the GPS information shows up not red but black, meaning that it's permanently on the images. Click OK. Looking back at our folder here, you'll see that the images now have the GPS information stored, lat long and altitude. Also in the folder are going to be the original files .jpg underscore original, which can't be opened in a program. So that's why I like to save the original files in a format that can be looked at by the computer here. So what I'll do now is I'll simply just delete them. And I can go to details, click on this, make sure you've got type selected. And I'm just going to scroll down to the ones that are not the JPEGs, these ones, and I'm just going to delete them. Again, this is just cleaning house, not required. But all of the files that are in this folder now are geotagged, and all the ones in here were tagged by Mission Planner, which are incorrect, so we would probably just delete those as they're not as accurate as the images we've tagged now in GeoSetter. In the non-geotagged, all these images don't have GPS information, which would show up right, right around here. If you're noticing that the images are ahead or behind, then you can come back into here, you can adjust with the arrows, and you can shift them ahead or behind to match accordingly. 
and double checking each time. And once you're happy, you can then save them and you're done. So that's how to tag images with GPS locations from a flight log, how to use Mission Planner to do a very rough tagging and to verify that the tagging has been done correctly. In our case, it was not. So we came into GeoSetter, which is my preferred program to start with in the first instance, and to apply the individual GPS point to the exact images, and then to check the images and the tagging on the map. The next videos we have will be following how to take the images and to post-process them into various stitching programs, either the cloud-based stitching, like Mapper Cloud, and also into programs like Pix4D, and Fiji and post-processing for NDVI and agricultural health. Hope you enjoyed watching, and if you have any questions, please feel free to contact us. Thanks.